you know, we're going to be continuing these. Obviously, we had a ton of webinars come up uh, last week. Uh, we got a lot of traction there. So what we're going to be doing is every Monday, um, kind of quick change, we're still going to be broadcasting live to LinkedIn, right? So you're still going to get a chance to see me, see the guests, but we're also going to be switching over to Zoom. And there's a couple different reasons why we're doing it. One, LinkedIn Live doesn't let you like set a placeholder for so for all of you who are like, yeah, when does Jake actually do these live things? It's really tough to know when. And so Kara is going to drop a link in the comments. You can go, you can sign up no matter what the week, no matter what it is, you can find us there. And so um, Cameron, you have the you have the honor of being not our last LinkedIn Live guest, but one of our last like only LinkedIn Live guests because man. Candidly, the format, dude, is not good. Like it just lets you just broadcast live. You can't send out reminders. You can't send out anything. And so, yeah. you know, poor people have got to figure out. And God bless a lot of them. They do put it in their calendars. But I look, I don't expect them to do that every week. So, you know, Kara, my my Kara here had been literally setting up LinkedIn events and inviting thousands of people and then rinse and repeating. And so LinkedIn's got to step up the live platform for sure. So we're going to switch it over to Zoom. I'll still broadcast it live. So if you want to tune in, you can tune in. But uh, we're going to do that starting next week. Kara's going to drop the link in the comments. So go ahead, click the link, drop it in your calendar every Monday at noon um, Eastern. You can tune in. So Cameron, I'm expecting big things as a part, as a part of this. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm excited to be the last guest on LinkedIn Live. Uh, <laughs> I mean, technically, I'm going to do more LinkedIn Lives. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, this yeah is... for sure. I, I'm excited. Well, hopefully, this will be a ploy for LinkedIn to step up their game and to be able to like uh, actually say, okay, we need to set these up properly. So, But that's exciting that you're switching over to Zoom. I mean, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool, man. Well, yeah. It's Thanks just for having me on. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. And so today we're going to talk about a bunch of different topics. Um, but I thought what would be good, man, because, you know, look, you and I haven't had a ton. You know, obviously we're working with you and the team now, which I'm super excited about. Um, but we haven't had a ton of interaction. So maybe just tell everyone a little bit about BuzzShift, you know, what you guys are up to, um, you know, what you're seeing maybe in the market right now based on that. I think that would be super helpful because you guys come at it from a little bit different angle than we do. And so I'd love to, to give everyone, you know, again, who's tuned in. I appreciate everyone. Um uh, and I think Rob, Rob's already dropped a question in here. I love it, everyone. So make sure if you have questions, you've got two CEOs of successful small businesses that you can ask questions to. And, and we are trying to adapt as fast as you can you know, humanly imagine. So keep the questions coming. Rob, we're going to jump to that here in a sec. So Cameron, I'll turn it over to you to maybe do a quick high level. Yeah. So quick high level. Um, yeah. So this is my third tech and marketing startup. Um, again, thank you again for having me on, Jake. Um, I, I, you know, third tech and marketing startup. So 10 years ago, we started BuzzShift. Uh, I was at, actually in 2007, I was at South by Southwest uh, Interactive, is what they called it at the time. And I was at the Driscoll Hotel sitting there in 2007. And this guy, Ev Williams, is sitting literally across the couch from me. It had to be Driscoll. having like a scotch there, right? At the Driscoll. Dude, it had to be some uh, oh, type An of old bourbon. fashioned, right? Yeah. It was right. The, the guy old next to me was guy. definitely, yeah, yeah. Old fashioned for sure. And so uh, we're sitting there and this guy's like, hey, uh, this app just went from 20,000 to 60,000 tweets in one day. And I'm like, Twitter, like first time I'd ever heard of it. And South by was like this aha inflection point for me was like, holy crap, the way we uh, fundamentally communicate as entrepreneurs, as technologists, as PR folks, et cetera, et cetera, like was fundamentally going to change. Now we have Twitter where it's like, you know, our president can tweet one thing and the stock market will go up or down based on one tweet. And I think that that's super interesting. And so in 2007, I was running an online data backup company that that preceded Dropbox and Box.net. And, um, you know, at the time, all of my clients were ad agencies. We were working with all these ad agencies in, in Austin and Dallas, et cetera. And we were doing backup for all their creative files and everything. And I was like, you know what, what's interesting about this is I love all the passion and what these ad agencies were doing, but like they didn't understand this world of digital at the time. And so um, and, and, and so fast forward, we started this little club called Social Media Club of Dallas, which is part of a, a national club. And that was 2010 and or, or right at the end of 20, 2009 going into 2010. And at the first event, I meet this guy, Eddie Bedrina. And Eddie, I'm this ADHD creative tech kid. And, uh, you know, Eddie is this very pragmatic. Uh, he came from, he was, he worked for both Bush 41 and 43 at the White House, um, was, uh, you know, very, very process driven dude. And him and I kind of came together like yin and yang. And I was like, holy crap, like, what if we started this like mini 
uh, our vision was like starting a mini uh, business consultancy on the front end that was like a mini Deloitte or BCG or McKinsey on the front end that happened to act like a digital ad agency. So we coined the phrase digital strategy agency in 2010. And that kind of took off. And as you know, with strategy comes execution. So therefore, we had to really build up a team. Um, long and short, it's been 10 years, it's been a great ride. We've built this team. We have just under 30 folks on the media side. Uh, we run a ton of digital media, um, creative content production, strategy, everything for uh, basically two, two customers, basically a lot of direct consumer, early stage direct consumer brands that are just raising their series A. So we work alongside with multiple VCs on that side and then in their portfolio companies and then uh, industry leading brands like USAA and Exotica and like major big brands. Um, and what we can learn from both of those is just kind of like some key learnings around the big companies we can apply to the startups and vice versa. And so it's kind of nice to have a little bit of the mix. But uh, we started as, you know, doing a lot of small businesses and then we evolved and said, you know, the media side of this of, of really, you know, I, funded startups was like, you know, honing in. And then the other part of this was, um, you know, in 2018, we made this pretty hard pivot to focus more on fully attributable brands like direct consumer e-commerce, um, just because we could see it all the way through that funnel or that customer journey. And I think that, yeah. you know, that was the biggest problem on the B2B side for us was is not seeing it all the way through. So that's kind of my story right there. Yeah, cool. So, all right. So a yeah. lot of your clients are B2C companies or a mix. Yeah. Do you still have some B2B companies as well, too? We do. I mean, yeah. USA and Exotica, are, I mentioned, are actually two big B2B brands. I mean, we're working on their employer brand over at USA and and uh, they're doing really, really well. Um, so, so it's funny because we 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 uh you know took this very hubspot model for a long long time inbound marketing approach and everything else yeah. and and then i think the biggest challenge we we're seeing on the b2c side was there's no value exchange everybody wants to sell 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 products and they were all and this is the the problem with ad agencies overall is that they're broken um because we have brand agencies that are doing cool creative stuff on the left side and then we have performance shops going all bottom of funnel on the right side and they're they're trying to tug a war over dollars. And, and so no one's really focused on full journey. And a lot of them talk a big game because it's buzzwords. But um, I, I think, you know, right now, we're at the, because of COVID-19, we're at this major inflection point um, to, sh you know, for brands to prove to their customers that they actually care. And I think that, you know, empathy is everything right now. So that's, that's, that's where, you know, I, we, we've seen a lot of great things come from the B2B side and we applied a lot of that value exchange type mentality to the B2C now. And I think it's, it's helped us grow a lot of those brands significantly. Right. But it sounds like, again, like one of the things that you that you noticed is just how do you but again, you talked about brand. How do you balance those two? So and like and I, I want to try to make it super tangible for anyone listening. Yeah. Do me a favor. If you're you're in the comments now, if you hear something that Cameron, you know, says, make sure to toss a like out there or a heart or something like whatever. I'll take a I'll take a heart if he doesn't want it. <laughs> Um, but but, but most heart. importantly, you know, let me know what role you're with here when you're tuning in. Give me your name, your company um and maybe your role so we can try to tailor some of this you know how do you think so so a lot of conversation and this might be you can say jake look this isn't my wheelhouse but i think i think it is you know i have a lot of conversation with sales leaders and um you know what they are very confused about how to balance call to action versus like things that might be considered nurturing your brand and mm -hmm. we we advocate quite a bit for quite a bit for um people to think about a brand is for the mid and long game and that the the CTA stuff is for the short game. You know, how would you how would you communicate to a sales leader? The, the, you know, again, you you come at like you and I kind of tackle very similar problems, different different sides of it. I come 100%. sales first, you come marketing first into sales and it's kind of that bleed between. So so how would you advise sales leaders or even if you have, you know there's a lot we have a lot of probably sales people here too, you know, how do you, would you advise them to think about these two things. What could I do on the front lines tactically if I'm in sales or sales development or even demand gen marketing? What are, what are some things you think that I could do on the front lines, you know, that, that kind of take the best of both these worlds? Yeah, so a great question. Um, I think that, you know, the CTA thing is, is that like, um, you can drive action, you can drive top of funnel action 
uh, up front and all the way through, I think your your call to action is a little bit different versus like, you know, one, one um, you know, everybody's at a different touch. There's all these touch points. If you're running a brand right now, if you're a brand marketer or you're on the sales team or whatever else, the real reality is, is that everybody you're connecting with has a different relationship with you That's based right. on what they know, right? And and so it's it's being able to identify where they're at in that relationship with you as your brand. I love that. And it's like you know, and so I think it's identifying those touch points and saying, okay, have I heard of this brand before? Am I familiar with them? If I'm not, then you know, putting out a lot of uh, education and entertaining kind of value kind of content that 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 people actually get some value out of is great. And you don't necessarily have to drive action at that point. You don't have to learn more and drive action at that point. But I think a lot of these platforms have given people an opportunity to drive learn more, but don't don't try to sell them into a form fill right away or you know getting an email right away. I still think an email is still very much a soft conversion or a consideration phase. And so that's like, yeah. in my opinion, like awareness content, all that education and all that uh, entertaining content right now, like I think a lot of brands, honestly, last week, we had to pivot like about six or seven of our brands from not only their messaging strategy, but their product mix of like what they're offering. And yeah. I'll, I'll give you some tactical examples here of things that we what we saw work even last week. Um, and, and then and, and be able to relate to this is like, at the end of the day, like we have a, a luxury jewelry brand right now that, you know, the last thing a woman's thinking about doing is going outside and wearing jewelry right now that's really nice or whatever else. So we're like, hey, you have these bead kits over here that women, like there's all these people staying at home, their kids need projects, all this stuff. Like let's switch to like the entire product mix to just focus on bead kits. And this was a, one of our clients at Cola. And we started, you know, literally saying, you know, work from home and like the messaging started changing everything. And it was being agile and nimble enough to be able to change that messaging to relate to somebody where they're at right now. And, and I think it's being empathetic really is key up there on awareness content. Consideration content is all about social proof. And I still think that most B2B people, uh, even on that level, don't do social proof well. They don't like as featured in or, you know, testimonials yeah. like that actually people care about. Um, so consideration based content of like getting them over the hur hurdle of like taking that action is key. Um, and I, I'm not I'm not seeing a lot of that happen as well. Um, I think people are going awareness and then conversion and they're kind of missing that middle layer of consideration. And I think that that's a huge opportunity. So what we've seen work is we've created like um, essentially thinking about it like email marketing, no matter what platform, no matter what channel you're on. Uh, of dripping people. So if they engage with this awareness content, then let's drip them to consideration based content. It's creating new audience segments or whatever. Um, and, and then kind of dripping them through because what we've learned is we've learned a lower cost for acquisition significantly if we're using more awareness and consideration content um, versus just trying to drive people to take action, even even so much to, to get people to give up their email address. I think you know, a couple of years ago, we saw like people were just doing these email, you know, subscription kind of plays all the time to, you know, on the B2B side, it's it's great to download a white paper or download a downloadable or whatever else. But um, I think that even that world's shifting a lot, especially yeah. on the B2C. So well, it's, on the B2B it's about not too, asking man. right away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're trying to shift a lot of our clients away from like some of these concepts like. You know, an MQL is not an e like a you know an email address. A, an ebook download is zero point zero intent to buy. You All know, right. now granted, now an ebook download and then seven other people in the same org download it, or you can test something. Like now, you're getting interesting. But I think if I can make it more, I want to take some of your advice here. And like we've got, I see a, a few people here have kind of dropped it in. Again, everyone, we've got a lot of people now hopping in. We got about fifty folks. So drop awesome. in your job title, company name, and what I'm going to probably do, man, if you're up for it. I'm going to try to yeah. pull some of these companies up and maybe we can talk through some of this stuff. Cause yeah, I think good. in particular, let me see, let's see it's, it's in beta still. All right, good. It's still working. So I think if I could make some of this more tactical that all yeah. of you in sales, if you're a frontline seller, okay. And you're a frontline sales or sales development rep or whatever you do, every single thing that Cameron just said is exactly how you should be running your business too. Meaning your boss or someone might only care about the outcome, but who gives a shit what they care about? You need to have your awareness-focused people to your, hey, this person liked and commented on your post. 
to then call to action based folks. Hey, Johnny connected with me. I sent him a video. He responded on LinkedIn. Then I go call to action. Right. Every single sales development rep out there. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I think Kevin, what's up, Kevin? Kevin uh, Moraine posted um, that they're switching a lot of their, um, you know, kind of time focus to like, you know, direct development or direct, you know, uh, direct, uh, not direct, direct response, more branding. It's not, or it's, 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 it's not this or that it's, it's, it depends on where they're at. There is still for every single business. And now, you know what we're going to do? I actually want to pull up Kevin's company. It's called global web index. So I'm going to share my screen. And I think, you know, what, I, what I'm seeing is that companies have, have, are taking too much of a one size fits all approach. I think the way that you, I've been describing two buckets, but I'm, I'm officially stealing camera and I'm switching to three buckets. Um, uh, there are people right now for almost every single product that are in bucket one and ready to buy. They are in an industry that's thriving very well right now, or you solve a very specific need that if you can reposition to that need, that there's a need for it. Then, then I, I did just say this bucket two, which is like other people that just need to be nurtured. But I think you're right. There's like a, a middle bucket, which is like, it's like, they're not in a hot industry. They're not in a dead industry, like an industry that's, you know, really, really being hit. They're actually somewhere in the middle, but if you can twist your value prop to them, the same way that all the conversations you're hammering, Cameron, I'm just having the exact same conversations on so, the sales side. So one thing to bring up there, Jake, and and I'm glad Global Web Index is a big is a I'll, I'll, we'll we'll talk about them specific, but here's the thing: what I like to say, you know, I always look at, you know, we always talk about features versus benefits, right? And I always thought, you know, like I love Bill Gates, but when Bill Gates launched the Zune MP3 player, he came out and said, here's here's this MP3 player that had like one gigabyte or whatever, right? And and everybody's like, I don't know what MP3s are and what the hell one gigabyte is, whatever. But the, and what, what are you talking about, right? Three years later, like literally uh, uh, Steve Jobs comes out, holds up an iPod and goes, this, this device will hold a thousand songs in your pocket. And all of a sudden, like the world changed. We we're like, holy crap, the mindset was like, we're not talking about gigabytes yeah. and MP3s. We're talking about this device will hold a thousand songs in my pocket. Yeah. So when I look at, you know, people like Global Web Index, which is a fantastic company, but like when I say, you know, like what makes us different and it's like platform insights and analysis, those are all like features, like whatever, data and like resources. And so what I what I see is, you know, if you look at that, you know, that, uh, you know, overall ad tech and marketing technology tools and platforms and everything else, like we went from like a couple hundred tools to now tens of thousands of tools. And so what's what everybody has done is basically uh, is created this commoditized culture of like everything, everybody's selling the same shit. And yeah. so, so at the it end of the day, like, the same. it could even it sounds, be differentiated. I yes. think that's the issue is, yes. is, is, is it, it's, a lot of it's people perceived. don't. That's right. And yeah. a lot of, I see a lot of founders and marketing departments really struggle with this, that they're like, no, but the product is different. I'm like, that's fine. But it literally sounds like every other third party data tool I've ever heard. Yes. And so I think it's, it's, it's defining yourself by not who you are as a company, but how you want to be perceived. And I think perception and your brand personality and everything else, tone of voice and being able to really connect, like that's the stuff that matters. And, you know, like I, I run these things called brand personality spectrums and workshops all the time and doing brand strategy. And I'm like, most of the time people get really excited about their features and they don't get too excited about how does this really benefit the end customer. Mm -hmm. And, and so like, you know, everybody claims that they go from data to impactful insights. Like I, I look at that, like, I, those are the things for me that like, that, that it's, it's just like, I can go on three other people's websites and literally it's the same stuff, right? Yeah. It's actually the same thing with agencies. Like our entire website is changing right now because if you go to a digital ad agency's shop, everybody's selling UX and SEO and, you know, it's these line item of services at the end of the day, people just care about results. And and so I think at the end of the day, like it doesn't matter how you get there. It just tell me what you can actually do for me. Um, so I, I don't know. That's how would you be? Yeah, no, I, we're, I think we're in a hundred, like how would, so, so what I've been doing in some of these live sessions is how do you pivot this messaging? So I'm looking, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, impactful consumer insights. Like Okay, so obviously, look, I know you're selling to retail. Like, there's no doubt, right? Like, you're selling to retail. You're selling sure. to other people who give a shit about like online conversions. You know, the interesting part. You know, let me ask you this: 
do you think at this stage in the game that they should have pivoted their whole website? Like, do you think at this stage that they should at least have some empathetic, there should be some messaging on the website that says like, hey, we're relevant. We get that there's a, an, a like something happening in the world. Or do you think it's okay that, that they haven't yet? I'm, I'm just, I'm, honestly, the, I'm just more curious than anything of like, I, I don't know. Like, look, we've had enough time. Now it's been like two weeks. And now we got another month. I think it's yeah. time for people to start getting really targeted in their messaging. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And I think that in that's, times that's, like now, right? Like 100%. in times like now, now is when you have to know your audience. You know, it's like, that's right. I, I think there's some like small things, but for me, it's like, how can they pivot this to be relevant now? So like here, you can take a look, like read it. And I, it sounds like, you know, Global Web Index too. But, yeah. you know, for me, it's about what are the things that are changing to where, look, people could need this now. I wouldn't pivot all the messaging to 100% branding. And I'm sure I know Kevin well enough. I know he's not either. But I would still be going after these marketers. It's like, look, there are more people on desktop consuming content right now than yeah. probably there ever has been. Or yeah. assuming we're not under quarantines, ever will be. The amount of data that we can give you and insights into how to get that extra half or 2% conversion is yeah. higher than it's ever been, right? And I know you retailer, you're struggling right now and you need to make sure you convert every single shopping cart. The only way you can do that is insights. Like that's yeah. what I'd like to see here. I'd like, I'd, you yeah. know what I mean? Like I'd like to see a lot more like, cause I think you can get specific. I, don't I think, think there's anything wrong with it. I, I think you can too. And even if you have like the social cred of like some of these clients that they have, which are phenomenal, like uh, companies that they work with, like I think you you have to lead with social proof a lot quicker. Um, and, and because at the end of the day, yeah. like if if you give some social proof of like what they did for you, um, there's another group that uh, we work with. It's called AskWonder.com. And yeah, the best. folks, the fast get one, the, the people at wonder, you know, it's, it's basically your, you know, kind of like personal research assistant or whatever else. It's just how they've like, it's like, we're going to help and like hold your hand through this and then showing people the process of like, here's a typical, like, typical engagement. This is what things look like. I think it's being very, to your point, kind of being more direct with them and to show them the value because what I think a lot of these SaaS platforms do uh, out of the gates and research companies, they, they kind of hide behind this wall and you have to really go do a lot of discovery and, and weave through yeah. all this to figure out what they really do. Um, and I think that it's just like, hey, if they can solve for one problem right now for you, um, then, then show that what those problems are. I think that what, what happens is, is that companies like Global Web Index, which I tr love this company, by the way, they, they, um, they do a lot of different things for a lot of different people. And so, so they don't want to like get too uh, what we call pres uh, prescriptive. They want to be kind of not all things for all people, but I think they can define that messaging a little bit more. Um, one of our clients that we work with for uh, a long time, which was Evernote, our note taking app. Um, you know, one thing about them is they wanted to be the note, ta note taking app for everybody just to kind of do whatever yeah. we started we started repositioning their brand to say, Hey, Evernote, like, what about if we were like, you know, Evernote for education and showing out use cases uh, and really highlighting use cases around education or whatever. Right. And then, and then, and then, you know, in the health world, like how could these, you know, health healthcare providers use, use Evernote or whatever else. So like being a little more prescriptive, I think is key and showing people the use cases on how they could actually use it right out of the gates and so people could say, this is the type of industry I'm looking for. And then maybe dovetail into like, here's some of the use cases of around how you might use it or something like that, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. That's, that's where my head goes. I also think, you know, look, if you gave me about four hours with your case studies, I guarantee I could pull out five where everything that's happening in the world is actually more applicable now. That, yeah. you know, because this, we did this thing for this company that was looking to deal with whatever X, O, I, Z to where you could take this content and just reposition the exact same outcome and what you 100%. did in a way that's more applicable now. And I that's feel right. like, you know, for every sales team, that's how you need to be thinking. You can't just rely on marketing to do your job for you. Marketing is not going to be able to figure this out on their own, right? Yeah. Like, and I'm telling you, like marketing is struggling the same way that salespeople are. So for everyone out there, you know, my big advice is, yeah, again, like with, with Global Web Index, you know, it's you have the content. It's what what is the right use case right now? What is what is this portion of retail going through? What is this po portion of mobile? And making sure that your salespeople have like 12 different messages where maybe they had two before. And it's just slight twists 
on every totally. single nuance on that, like Blizzard, that's online games. It's exploding. They're doing great right now. But flip that over to BuzzFeed, right? They're glo- like, I can't imagine if there's like Evian tequila, uh, probably not as much, right? Like I think probably <laughs> a little bit less, right? You know, especially because they're probably sold a lot through like, you know, restaurants, et cetera. So each message needs to be tailored to what's happening in that space. That's right. right. And I feel like you can then still do sales messaging with that. So we've got a couple more questions here now. Um, so let's see. Let's go up, Kevin. By the way, thanks, man, for letting me, me pull yeah. that up. You didn't. You didn't let me. I just did it. But you know, so that's great. Apologies if you're upset. Uh, no, he won't get upset at me. Um, okay. So <laughs> so Michael's was Michael uh, Oram. What's up, Michael? He says when your product solely deals with employee to employee interaction and its value being driven from that, and then his company is Dorsavi. All right, let me just take a look at it real quick. Um, how do you think about positioning right now? And I think it's interesting because you as a marketer, you kind of you take it. We take a similar lens on it, but it's a, also like a wearable sensor technology. Okay, yeah, this is really really fucking interesting because I think this industry, you know, is one that I think in off the gate you'd be like, oh, they're screwed, right? You'd be like, out of the gate, you're just like, oh wait, it's wearable sensor technology. You know, and obviously, you know, growing company. Mm. So, yeah. you know, what? How do you think about something like this? Like, let's say you sell a physical good, something that you know, again, for a lot of times, is you know, workplace safety, right? Less people are doing that. Mm. You know, um, elite sporting solutions, same thing. People are doing more inside. Maybe there's something there. Uh, clinical and sports, loot clinical, super interesting. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, what what are your thoughts when you see a when you see something like this? You know, yeah. I'm I'm just looking through this right now. That uh, Dorsey, like super interesting. Um, this is yeah, it I, for me, dude. As you, know, you consume, so, I would yeah. I, I would I would I would hone in on first responders. I would oh, yeah. I would go hardcore on first responders. I'd be like, look, you have these people; they're out working hours they've never had before. Mm-hmm. Let us help you keep them safe, right? By making sure that as they're working long hours, they're isolated, they're not getting feedback from people, you know, like I would really think if there's something there. Now, this is interesting. They're going to have to pivot this, right? Right. So there's HD video objective data. Like, is there a way that you can just position the sensor data to just be good enough? Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, so. Yeah. But that's my like, that was my initial like gut reaction. The the other thing when I see a lot of these like point solutions on the on this, this is a really interesting brand. The um, you know, one thing to think about is like, you know, we live in this ubiquitous kind of world. So like, are you the app or the platform? So in my mind, where you know, Salesforce, everybody kind of plugs into Salesforce.com, right? And and they're the they're the platform, and everybody else plugs in. Um, it, it's understanding where you fit. Like when I look at a brand like this, understanding where you fit in an ecosystem. Like, are you kind of off on your lonely island, or or, or is this is this Dorsa V like uh, product like integrate with other things? And and like, what where do you guys fit in the ecosystem? Because I think that that's when I when I go to sites a lot of times and I don't understand like what the ecosystem looks like. It's it looks like it's very self contained. Yeah. Then then I then I'm like, how does this fit in with existing? players like whether it you know in a lot in in the world of retail where it's like well how does this integrate with pos devices and how does this how does this all integrate with everything else right so like i guess understanding like the complexity level a lot of times people will see different things like this and they'll be like oh there's so many layers of complexity so if you can create like this frictionless feel of like oh it's really easy like it's just one two three like and it, it, from an experience standpoint this is really an easy integration kind of thing. So like showing the ease of not just use once you have it, but the ease of integration um, and how this just is flawless, right? Or whatever else, because I think that those are the things, those are the things in the enterprise tech side that people like get nervous about. They're like, oh man, the, the change management and everything else, like show how easy this is yeah. and walking your hand through it. It's like when we talk to project management tools and, and uh, companies that run project management tools, there's some companies that it's like, here, we're just giving you the tool, you figure it out. But other ones like, I don't know, Reich or somebody like that will actually do a great job, like doing a lot of handholding and they'll show you how easy the process is or whatever. So I think just showing people how easy the process is, is key as well. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think just looking at some of these things here, it's like, yes, I think that somebody, I think what would happen is to your point on the, like you nailed it, which is why Sony deals don't move forward is they're like, oh my gosh, how are we going to execute something like this? And so yeah, I think if, if, if your exactly, pitch is yes. around, if your pitch is around, your people are moving now more than ever, this type of injury is more likely now than ever. I, I think there's something there, man. I think there is. And then the, the flip side of the pitch is like, and guess what? Like you can just figure out what's the bare bones version of this is someone could just stick in their pocket and go work and you could probably help them a little bit, right? Maybe you don't have to have the camera installed or whatever it is. Like, I wonder if there's something that you can do there, you know, because it sounds like, you know, there yeah. definitely are some things here that could be interesting. And again, I don't, I don't know enough about it, but the, some of these industries are industries right now that are cranking transportation, healthcare, I, utilities I are cranking. This, I still think the story arc is missing from the, this brand specifically. It's like showing it from the, a, a first person, like a, a, a a POV kind of standpoint of like walking the day in the life of a user in a, in a, from an employer standpoint, like, like showing these use cases in a video, like, or whatever, where in 30 seconds I can learn what this product could do. And then I'm like, Oh my God, like I could apply that to my industry as well or whatever else. Like, I think it's, it's, if you're leading with a video, like instead of just a bunch of B roll and people looking at, you know, different things, it's like, actually telling a real story right i think that the 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 play on storytelling is going to be huge with a brand like this um and then maybe show those different stories in different industries or whatever else of how they used it and and it's like oh my god i want to do that for us so i i just i think that that's a missing component right now was i kind of just at first blush as i looked at it it's just like how do i tell that story in a more meaningful and effective way yeah i mean look at check this this dude they literally have a case study. But again, I, I like I always come at this from the sales angle, which means, look, I don't need marketing to do <laughs> shit. My job is to go and figure out how to reposition this. Dude, You ha they have a case study, how healthcare workers are the new epidemic in workplaces. That's just buried, yeah. Dude, if I were, you know, again, <laughs> going back to it, if I'm you, if I'm in sales for this, this is what I'm doing. I'm taking this case study, I'm taking to every healthcare system. My friends, yeah. look, we've been doing this before a pandemic. We are ready right now to help serve you. Let us help you the same way we did Vinci. Dude, come on, man. No, this you're exactly like, right, Jake. I mean, that, you're spot on with that. And every, 100%. I got to I gotta tell you, man, every company that I work with, and I'm sure everyone has this, every one yeah. of you has a product or a use case just like this. And so, you know, if you're in sales, like, you know, I just feel like we have to, yeah, dude, again, that's so Michael dropped some notes. Like the sensors read body movements and reports in real time. Michael, you should be you should be making hay right now. Transportation, yeah, totally. these, truck, these truck drivers are driving more hours than they've ever driven before. Healthcare workers are working more hours. Police, fire, you know, um, ambulance, all these people, they're all working, EMTs, they're all working more hours than ever before. You have a case study around it, man. I feel totally. like this is this is what it is. Um, so Rob, there's Graham, gold in there. Yeah. There, there's think, a lot of gold. Yeah, man, totally. I, 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 absolutely. You know, that, that's where I'd be wow. focused guys. It's like, I can't wait on more. If I'm in sales, I can't wait on marketing to do that. Like, you know, I've got to get creative. And so that, that's where I'm thinking. So Rob Graham, thank you by the way, for redropping your question, man. He says, we're giving away our software for six months. I want to strategically camp position this campaign instead of this is free. Now take it, which is smart. That's the number one. I get a lot. I can't tell you how many people in the last week have asked me this question about should I give it away for free? And you, you're exactly thinking about the right, um, the right mindset of like what happens after. I want to have a meaningful and effective message in place. I'm already cancel canceling all our prior sequences um, and, and know that we aren't going anywhere with this pandemic. I want to double down on changing my message. So basically, he, he's talking about using a free, like a free offering. And I'll, and I'll give my take on it and then I'll get yours. Yeah, please do. Because I've been yeah. thinking, I've been, we've been doing this a lot. Just saying it's free doesn't particularly help. It has to be, do they actually want to use it? If you're saying like, hey, we're turning on this feature for you for free and they're like, okay, grab, yeah, thanks. You're not actually building any relationship capital. If instead no. it's like, look, John, I think this can really help you. Here's the two applications. I'm going to invest in getting you onboarded. I'm going to make sure your team's using it and we're going to do this and I'm not going to charge you a penny. The one thing I'll ask is look in 60 days, if it seems like there's actual utility here, then we can have a sales conversation. Is that fair, John? So my, my point is every free thing should have the same 
rigor around it. If you're going to test it, you got to, because you, you're, you, we're doing this to get them to test it, you know, and if they're not going to properly test it, we can push up his, I'll pull up his product too, as we kind of, we go through this, but, but yeah. that's it. Like I'm still telling all of our clients, like we should be running structured, you know, not like a little less structured, like, Hey, like we're not like pushing for, you have to sign and whatever it is. But I think it's totally okay to say, look, this is what it is. I'm going to get you set up. We're going to make sure you're success, you know, you're successful and then go for, go from, from there. So what are your thoughts on free right now? Yeah, I think it goes back to positioning and messaging. Like I don't, I, I think that, you know, like telling people that, Hey, you need their help and you want their feedback on this. If it adds value, you know, at the end of the day, from a utility standpoint, if this, if this is really something that is helping you in your daily, you know, life, uh, at, at work and everything else, if this is a utility tool, I haven't pulled it up yet, but, but I think that, you know, at the, at the end of the day, like if this is something that actually adds value, then it's okay to, to come out and not, you cannot just come out and say, Hey, we're going to give it to you for free because on the back end, they're going to like, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're going to, they're going to try to pull you down like really quickly and be like, ah, either they're going to be like, no, I'm done. Um, but I think it's, it's really tell asking them, Hey, um, we really want your feedback on this. Like we we're giving this for the next 90 days. We're, we're giving this out to our preferred vendors or whatever that might be. They need to feel like they're somewhat exclusive. And, and, and that's what I think where it's like, even even to the like limiting the number of people that take it on and so there's a sense of like uh, attainability of uh, exclusivity even there of saying hey for the first hundred we're gonna we're gonna do this we want y'all's feedback over the next 90 days or six months or whatever else and then we'll regroup on that and then use that as a data play of like where do they actually you know what aspects of the of the tool do they actually use what do they not use and why um, I, I remember like one of our clients, Twilio, doing this for, for a long time where they would give out, you know, it's like, boom, just use this. And then all of a sudden, like people would utilize it and then it'd be like, man, they're using this aspect of the tool, but they're not using this at all. Maybe we need to retool it. So they use it as a data play and to get yeah. people actually utilizing it and then talking about it. Right. So like, how do you then empower them to <clears throat> advocate for your brand at that point? Right. So there's there's an advocacy level if you're using it. You, you want to tell other people, man, this is like, this is a game changer for me, right? So I think it's, it's all about, um, in my opinion, your go to market strategy and having a really good go to market strategy. And then to, um, you know, positioning, um, just giving away something for free, like and telling somebody that, yeah, that's not going to help anyone. So yeah. I think it's, it's positioning. What if it's there? What if it, it sounds like what a lot of what they're thinking about is even core product? It sounds like, you know, which is, you know, it, the, the, just I've got I've got it pulled up, which is basically it's a push notification platform that got allows. It. And it sounds like it's super, super flexible in terms of the mm -hmm. different ways that it can be it can be implemented um, across websites, brands, apps. They have, you know, 20,000 plus, um, you know, websites, brands, apps and agencies that use them as kind of like the go to push notification is kind of what it feels like to me. Um, you know, why, yeah. yeah, why is it now a time for you guys to like, yeah, I mean, again, like, who do people want to push notifications to now more than anyone? Employees, internal, yeah, every everyone's remote. <laughs> why don't you install this on top of like, why doesn't this become the way that internal comms and HR communicates with people? You already have web push, you have web push, mobile and email. Like, dude, like, I, I just would wonder, like, can we can we pivot to like a remote work play here? Yeah. Right? Can you then can you then position this to customer success teams at your customers? Hey, you can use this as a layer on top of your customer success activity. That's like above and beyond and keeping them up to date on things that are happening. That's not just like basic, like that could be interesting. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what I'm thinking is like, again, this is a good example of it. It's like, this employee engagement right now is a hot button for a yeah. lot of people and it ain't going, it's not going anywhere. I think, look, we were already headed toward remote work and it's, it's not, we're not going back to how it was. That's for sure. Now, yeah. if we go back to some hybrid, that's probably, you know, more accurate, but what do you think? So it's push based. If you were yeah. going to do a free, a free pilot around this, like how would you think about positioning that? 
yeah, so one, be successful. One, I think the biggest thing is is that create um, a topic map. Um, Dennis, you always talks about a topic map, and I'm, I'm a big fan of it. And a topic map is like you put your brand at the center of this, and this is a great example. And you say, okay, what do we want to be known for, and in what spaces, and everything else. And I think the big opportunity, like I, typically, I, I tell people to not verticalize something, but in, a, in an instance like this, like the use cases itself, like I just dove in really quickly on this and. And you and you have one example of uh, the number one online leather store pushes e-commerce sales forward on this case study leather up. And so I'm like looking at that and I'm like, oh, my God, like they in my opinion, they need to be creating content or, or verticalizing this where it's like push NAMI for, you know, e-com specifically. Um, in my opinion, this is like a very much a plug in for e-com on that level. And so, like, you know, there's a lot of ways to do that, whether it's, you know, integrating with. I, I'm going to use this example of like um, uh, Magento or, or um, Shopify or WooCommerce or whatever it is, but being a plugin and being a discovery play on those plays, there's, there's a lot of tactics there. But I just think that like, you know, if this is made for retail, it's one thing. If it's made for employees, it's one thing. Like there's like, there's use cases around B2B side here. There's use cases around e-com. There's, there's all these different use cases. I think it's just, you got to break it down a little bit more because it's kind of this, again, it's kind of this all encapsulating thing right now. Um, I think that there's a huge push towards publishers also, like going more push notifications. Um, we're seeing AI bots be a huge thing. People want to just, instead of looking yeah. at thrill lists or whatever else, they're actually, you know, they just want to SMS somebody and get like, what's the best taco restaurant in Dallas? And I type that in and it just it tells me what it is or whatever. I, I just think that at the end of the day, these guys should probably verticalize a little bit more. Um, again, at first blush, um, that's yeah. that's the first thing I'm, I'm looking at because it, I still like, again, knowing that I think that push notifications itself, the feature is kind of commoditized now. Yeah. And so like at the end of the day, there's a lot of vendors out there that do something very, very similar. Um, so I, I'm kind of looking at it going, say, how do you truly differentiate yourselves? And I think it's about like, just say, we do it really well for e or we do it really well for this, you know, yeah. or whatever that is, just dial it in. Yeah. And make sure that again, like Rob is a sales lead, you work to say, Hey, these are the main eight verticals. Here's going to be our one or two plays for each vertical. And That's I think right. again, like candidly, Rob, you probably can't wait for marketing for this. They're just gonna, it, you know, it's not, it's not gonna happen. And so when I think about this, Rob, like one, so now, now that I've looked at it, I, I don't like you guys giving it away for six months. This isn't a product yeah, that, I, this product actually takes change management to adopt. You're changing the way that people communicate. And so I think you could, you could, there's some, there's some like hybrid that you could be doing of like, look, you need to communicate right now. Here's what it is. Let's, let, we're gonna work to put this together at a super discount. Right. You need this. But I don't think you need to be giving it away for free, man. And I think six yeah. months is way too long because it's going to sit there. They're not going to use it. No one's like, oh, I need a push management software right now because my old software like just sucked and, you know, email is not good enough. And so, yeah, I'm just going to take all this time that I have to completely change and come up with SLAs for how my team should communicate. It just isn't going to happen. So, yeah, that's my, my hot take. No, I mean, the other part is, is that I'm going to throw out one more thing. I just dove into Pushnami for such partners and they have all these partners and kind of integrations and everything else. I, I think collaborations are a great thing from a PR standpoint, and everything else as well. I know marketing would have to get on support, but like, like being like, you know, if you're, if you're already integrated with Shopify, which it looks like you are, or in the real estate world, lending tree or whatever else, I mean, amplify your collaborations. Yeah, I like, like that. And this is a marketing play, but I think that like where you're cross pollinating audiences, right? I, I believe in the OPN model of other people's networks. And so at the end of the day, like how can you tap into some of your partners, uh, networks of people? And and so for everybody that signs up for, for this part, for this, you know, I don't know if it's Shopify, then all of a sudden like, it's like, then they get, it's like, oh, you should check out Pushnami or whatever else. So like, I would just kind of do a rally cry around some partnerships and collaborations. I think that that would be a, 
that would be a really good move. But I agree with Jake 100. percent I, I looking at your product for the next like last couple minutes, I would not give it away either. I would if there's a certain feature set or yeah. a, a specific thing around email or push that you can just it, it, I call it a discovery item or a, a give people a taste of something. Like give them a taste of something, but don't give them the whole thing, especially when change management takes place. Like that's just so they much won't use it. over it yeah they won't, yeah, they use, won't it. use it like, yeah and, yeah. and, and also What's protect your thing that's yeah. right that's right is there something lightweight and then with your current customers can you you know do that you can run the same play so all right so we've got let's see we've got a couple more questions in here i think we got yeah. time for maybe one more all right so we got matt webb what's up matt matt is at the up, new matt? york red bulls nice and he says what's your opinion on ticket sales in sports right now so we work with a handful of sports teams and yeah. so I, you know, I, I know what my opinion is that, you know, our opinion is this, that like, look, it's going to come back and it's going to come back hard, meaning mm -hmm. people are going to have a lot of budget sitting around. Now, what's interesting, you know, is who knows how long it's going to last. You know, I saw, I don't know when does, when does major league soccer start back up again? That's the one sport you asked me about that. I'm like, I have no I idea. About. I got you here. I'm I got you. soccer, but, but I'm, super dialed into all these other sports but i did just pull up new york red bulls and i'm familiar with them even though i don't know soccer really well it's like i know every other sport there is yeah, yeah um, they were some, they were supposed to start it looks like but they got pushed so they were supposed to start it looks like on opening weekend was march 1st so it looks like all that stuff got pushed so it's still, yeah, they're MLS, still kind of like yeah. up in the up in the air yeah. So you were you were saying like well, how would you approach it overall, Jake? You were saying yeah. You know, well, that's his question. I mean, he's a, a young seller. He's working for the Red Bulls, and he's like, dude, like, what what the hell should I be doing right now, right? And so, what what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think that you know a lot of brands that I mean, this is the same thing that we're dealing with in the travel industry, right? Um, destination kind of things of like um, giving people a sense of hope that this is what's coming. Um, I think it's. Um, here's the deal. More people are on Instagram and Facebook right now than ever. Our stats are, I mean, as a Facebook marketing partner, we like, it is crazy through the roof, right? So like the amount of people that are actually consuming content is at its all time high just over the last two weeks ago, uh, from two weeks ago. And so like, I think now is a better time than ever. And this is the thing where all these brands are hitting pause on all their ad spend, you know, inventories at the all time high cost are actually at the all time low. Um, I think this is a really good play to help nurture and build more of an affinity on the front end. Like from a marketing sense, I can only really speak from the marketing side, Jake, on this is is like I would be actually getting people excited about this yeah. uh, coming up because I've seen some of the big hotel chains and some of the um, even I think we'll see some of the airlines actually pivoting their messaging about like this summer and getting excited about what's coming this summer. Um, that's, I, I think you almost have to get people really excited about it and nurture them. Keep, t stay top of mind though. I, I think that that's the one thing that I brand think that's it for sales too. It's it. Yeah. Like, look, man. dude, you can't do shit. Like if I'm this guy, I am just, I am building, I'm, I'm sending out my highlight MLS highlight game of the, of the year from 2018 this week. And then yeah. I'm sending out the game from 2017, whenever X, Y, Z had a hat trick. You know, like yeah. I, I think sales needs to take marketing plays right now and that yeah. you divide them into those three buckets. Like who could be a buyer now? You know, who could not be in that? Because here's the thing too, like which would maybe another thing to think about is let's say, because they're, they're in New York, they're actually in, in Newark. You know, look, so everyone who had a New Jersey Devils, uh, Philadelphia 76ers, anyone who had a suite there, I guarantee they're going to get a credit for next year, which means they have extra budget. That budget that sure. they were going to spend next year, they don't need to spend it all because they're going to get a credit for the rest of the season. Therefore, your whole pitch could be, hey, you know what? Look, try it. Try four tickets with us for next for this season once we kick off for free because basically you're just going to take part of the budget that you had for the Devils already. Like that's you yeah. know like that that might be an interesting play to try to get some people interested. I don't know. Yeah. No, I think uh, yeah, I totally agree. And whatever, you know, you guys are doing uh, New York Red Bulls, like as far as like, you know, how are you really, you know, 
curating out some of your top fans out there and like giving back and like people that have a higher brand affinity or engagement towards your brand already? Like, what are you doing to like, you know, nurture them and giving back? So even sending them a surprise and delight or something like that, I'm going to tell you like in a time like this right now, some of your yeah. top fans, I, I would be, you know, it, it's like what we're doing with a couple of our brands. We're sending out surprise and delight to some of those customers that are already like, you know, taking pictures and it's very Insta worthy and everything else. But like, I think whatever you can do to nurture from an, uh, a, like a loyalty standpoint, I think your most loyal people need to be your fire starters. And these are the people you're going to be rallying around when at the end of the day, like in a month or two out from now, you're going to be needing all these people to really like have a groundswell effect. And so like, in my opinion, I'm, I'm nurturing the crap out of my most loyal supporters of the brand. That's yeah. what I'd be doing. Yeah. And, and I think that there, and again, like you said, there's really easy ways to do that that aren't as expensive either. You know, it's, For about, sure. the, it's about the creativity and thought. Oh, know, that's, what they, that's what they care about. Not just shipping out a ball, right? The yeah, sign yeah, yeah. Or something sure, like that. Sure. that. That's just a random thing. But I, I 100% agree, like where it's like loyalty is a key thing. And that's, it, it's, it's, uh, that's the key thing. I, I think that ultimately embracing them is, is key. However you can do that, even if it's digitally is fine. Yeah, uh, for real. So, all right, everyone. Cameron, thank you. It's good. I hey, like, I like, having, I I like having like a marketing because again, why I think it's important for people to hear what, what you're doing is it's exactly what as an individual contributor, this is your job right now. And I don't right. think enough individual contributors realize that like, look, you also need to have different phases of your own pipeline that you're managing in different right. ways to interact. And if your only play that you know is call to action, you're never going to be great. You've got to try to learn, really learn these like other plays. And I think these are the same plays marketing. You said like, oh yeah, you know, general awareness, some form of consideration, and then like there should be wanting to engage. And so I think every seller should be looking at their book or different verticals and just thinking about what bucket am I going to do? Am I going to put this in like just nurture for now? Dude, they're going through some stuff. Hey, maybe there's some opportunity. So let me test some things. And then like, hey, these guys with a little repositioning, I think I should get them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, for sure. I, I think at the end of the day, as long as you can, you know, be willing to like right now in a time like right now, where there's so much fear and uncertainty and everything else, it's the willingness to make pivots, make adjustments during this time. Um, it's it's not just taking a campaign approach. It's about, hey, let's let's hold for a second. And let's regroup and the, like, let's make a pivot. And I know that agile mindset around, especially if you're working for a big company is, is difficult, but I mean, it's needed and, and your customers need to hear that, um, that, that you actually care. So whatever you guys can do to really, you know, show me that you actually know me and actually care that mentality that that's key. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's that you have to like, it's, it's things like ha that are happening now that make you have to be agile. Hundred percent. Right? And if you're if yep. you're not, you're going to struggle. So again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Remember, there is a Zoom link. Kara's going to drop it again. So if you haven't clicked on it, click on it now. You can add it to your calendar. Next week, we're going to start on Zoom. I'll still be here on LinkedIn. So if you want to tune on LinkedIn, you can hear it as well. But if you just want to have a reoccurring invite, you want to join on Zoom, you can do that. Cameron will have you back when we're on Zoom too, even though you're the last person here. But awesome. uh, thanks again, Love everyone. It. I pr appreciate you tuning in, Cameron. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it, and we'll see yeah, everyone next week. Appreciate it. Quick announcement. We have invested a lot of time into YouTube. So go over to my YouTube channel, just type in Jake Dunlap, click the little bell and you'll get notified every time we upload a video. We have over almost 300 videos now. Anything you wanna know about sales, sales leadership. So get over and subscribe.